What's up guys, it's Jazz and welcome to the Neurodivergent Dog Trainer. Today we're going to be doing a review over the first three months of Pup Box. This is because I started this channel when I got the fourth month of Pup Box and so the puppies are uh, a bit older. So they, uh, they've destroyed a lot of the stuff. So I think I found five things that they haven't destroyed yet. So I'll show you those things and let you guys just kind of know my opinions on them. So let's get into it. First off, I love Pup Box so much. Each month with Pup Box, they give you an inventory of what you get, and then you get these little training cards that are for every month of life. I went ahead and knew we were getting Dolly, signed her up for Pup Box, as well as Bark Box, so I'll also be reviewing the Bark Box as they come in but went ahead and signed her up for these as a newborn that being said she was four weeks old when I signed her up so we're gonna go over that one first and I will take a picture of these and edit them into posts so that you can actually read everything along with me here but the first one is all about getting your home puppy proof because the puppy's only four weeks old so they're still with mom making sure that they're getting all their nutrients and learning how to be a dog and everything. So it kind of gives you an overview of what to expect, what you should be doing, letting you know how to see the world from a puppy's eyes, getting down on the floor, crawling around, making sure there's nothing that puppy can get into and then triple checking because they're still going to get into everything. With the newborn one, I did get this really adorable blanket that they have since had taken away from them. Um, it is very dirty because puppies and no amount of washing seems to get rid of it. But you can see they started chewing it up and I kind of want to keep this for purely sentimental reasons. I have this photo of her at five weeks old when she got to be on this for the first time. And then I, I'm using the blanket to measure her growth because it's adorable and I can't not do it. Um, I also, and it also came with this stamp ink pad that's really cool and I can't find it. I know I still have it. I don't remember what I did with it. Um, but their paw doesn't ever touch the ink. So you put the paper under the ink, there's a plastic film, and then they push down on the paw and it transfers that pressure onto the paper that comes with it so you get their paw print. It is absolutely awesome. I did not get a paw print of Dolly and Merle until they were 11 weeks old. I really wish I had done it whenever I got the box when they were five weeks old because again, they were this big. The first month's all about just kind of getting you mentally ready for the fact that you're gonna have a puppy and they're gonna destroy everything. They're gonna bite you, they're gonna jump on you. They're puppies, that's what they do. The second month continues that theme. It goes into house training, welcoming home the puppy, starting crate training, suggestions, teaching the puppy to actually respond to you focuses a lot on that. It also lets you know that like your dog's gonna spend a lot of time asleep. They're gonna bite you. They're going to pee everywhere. But you also need to be aware of that and they do a really good job supporting the general training philosophy of you cannot correct a dog for a behavior it does not know is good or bad. So what I'm loving about this is it's all very much a more positive reinforcement base, which is what I also like to teach with because you have to teach them what they can do first. You have to teach them what you want. And then once they get it, and you'll know when they get it. For instance, we went to my mom's this past weekend for Thanksgiving at the time of filming. And these puppies did not counter surf a single time. There was one time whenever I think they heard me say they hadn't done it and they were like, oh crap, mom knows we know we're not supposed to do this now. Ah, and Dolly tried to get her nose up on the counter, called her off of it, and she didn't do it anymore. So now I'm aware of that. And so now I am fully sure that what they have done at home is figured out, is I unintentionally taught them it was a game. Because if they got off, I would toss them a treat away from it so it seemed like it was coming from the ground. What they are doing instead of not jumping is jumping up, looking at me, waiting for me to notice and tell them to get off. And then once they get off, they were getting the treat. So what I've been doing instead is paying attention whenever I, I see them going into the kitchen 
and I'll show all this in another video, so I don't know I'm going into it now, but I'm gonna finish this train of thought before I move on. But not rewarding them after they jump up on something. So if I see that moment right before they're about to jump up, and it's that fast, like they do like a mini tiny bunny hop, and then I go, eh, eh, get their attention on something else, and then usually it's leave it because their real life leave it is so much better than anything with the treat because we've been using it since day one. Get their attention off of it, distract them with something else, and then they get the treat for not doing it. I'm learning very quickly that's how I should have done it in the first place because breaking this habit is not a fun process. So you will have, we'll have a video or two on that because it's gonna take a minute to break this habit. Oh, I also forgot this little raccoon came in the first one and it had a little dumpster that it got to stay in but they destroyed the dumpster but they still have the little tiny raccoon. Mostly because I'm afraid of them swallowing it at this point, but it's really cute and tiny and I love it. Um, I don't actually have any treats or toys left over from the second month box. We have used all of them. They've destroyed the toys. I don't even remember what toys came in it. And I cannot find on their website where it would tell you what came in it. So on to the third month, which was a lot more, it actually talks about positive reinforcement, developing the bond with your puppy, keep talking about potty training because a dog is not typically considered potty trained until it goes two months without an indoor accident. They are just now about three weeks without peeing or pooping in their crates, minus when they got sick. I don't count sick time for having accidents because I didn't always wake up in the middle of the night and that's on me, that's not on them. Well, training, how to get them started on that, a lot of teething and puppy biting and kind of going on the philosophy of teaching them what is okay to bite and what is not okay to bite. And that is a lot of what we've done with the puppies is we've given them things to bite. We give them the toys. They really, really like logs. So we gave them logs to chew on, which never causes them any issues. But if you're gonna give your dog sticks or logs, probably don't in all honesty. It probably wasn't the smartest decision but they literally tear the bark off of the trees. So I'm not too terribly concerned about these two, but that's an individual dog basis. We are constantly checking their mouths though to make sure they don't have anything stuck in their mouths. They haven't gotten any cuts or anything. So because we do let them chew on that, they're very used to our hands being in their mouths, checking on everything. Because I have a total fear of them getting a stick caught between their teeth. Absolutely terrified of that. However, with the third pup box, obviously I have a few more things because it was last month. We did get this awesome treat pouch, which I love because it has a spot for your poop bags on the outside and it cinches shut. However, personally, I prefer my fanny pack one, which I keep across my chest. That way I can very quickly reach these. Um, the puppies are really good at knocking this off of my belt loop and getting into it. So this one, I don't use a whole lot. Terrence uses it more. We kind of just keep treats in both of them and keep them close to us while they're at, while we're inside with them. Reward them for being calm, reward them for whatever we want to reward them for at the time of training. This is really cool because this is an interactable chew toy. So it's very soft. And they gave us some pumpkin spice peanut butter now, I don't know what happened to this because it's not set to expire until March of 2023. However, and I'm like, whenever we first got this, it was like liquid. It just came out super, super easy. However, now you have to like, even if you use gravity to help, this stuff is not coming out. So I don't know if we got a bad batch or what's going on with this. But this is, uh, it tastes amazing. They love it. They actually fight over this toy a lot whenever I put peanut butter in it. So they don't actually get this toy a whole lot because I only have the one. Um, I'll probably buy a second one at some point just to make up for that. But like it used to be, I could just squeeze this in and fill up the whole star. Um, you can see that was like a tiny minuscule amount. That's like two licks worth of peanut butter. Thing is, this stuff genuinely tastes good and is human grade quality. Like I 
made one of my friends try it because she thought I was crazy because I was kind of hungry, but I didn't really want a snack or anything. So I just went and took some of the peanut butter. And it tastes really good. It, honestly, if you've ever had like the organic natural peanut butter, not the Jif or anything, the really expensive stuff they had to like stir to get the oils reincorporated, it tastes like that. So I love the concept of this. Um, I don't know what happened to ours because we do keep it very warm in the house. So it should never have like seized up or anything, but it kind of did that thing that honey does whenever honey gets too hot. So unfortunately for us, this isn't really working anymore. It's probably gonna get tossed, which makes me very sad. Um, I might also just cut the top off and like scoop everything out so that I can keep using it because again, it's really good and they love it. But the squeezable container, good in theory, not so great whenever it seizes up and you can't get anything out of it. So honestly, I would probably buy this if they had it in just like a normal peanut butter container so I can scoop it out easier. Personal thoughts if I got to design the product. Obviously I don't because I don't work for Pet Box, Petco, whatever company owns this. I think Petco owns this one because I made the joke that I'm cheating on PetSmart with them, but it's fine. So yeah, um, I absolutely am loving Pup Box. I think their quality of products is absolutely wonderful. Their training program and introducing training is perfect for like a non-dog training owner, someone who just wants a really well-trained pet and wants to train that pet, but and kind of has an idea and has support, but doesn't really know where to start. This is a wonderful guide to it and I genuinely think it's one of the coolest products I've seen in a while. That being said, I'm still obviously going to compare them to BarkBox, but you can't really compare them too terribly much because while they are both dog subscription boxes that give you toys and treats and stuff, this one does have an edge because it does help you with training. And I like that. I like that a lot. But yeah, all that being said, those are my thoughts on the Pup Box subscription service. I love them. I am excited to keep using them for the next eight months or so. I definitely want to test it out for at least the first year. At that point, I'll reevaluate if I want to keep going and what it would be like past a year because I don't know. It's not something that I really know what to expect each month. So we'll keep it surprising us every month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got some good information out of it or I made you giggle a little bit, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see new dog training content based around training with neurodivergencies. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!